Hello and welcome to Maths with El Profe Lo. Okay, so in this video we're going to be doing some elementary number theory and we're going to be investigating the Chinese remainder theorem. And then in the next video we'll actually solve the same problem using a different method and that's the beauty of mathematics is that uh, there are always, or not always, but most of the time there are multiple ways that you can approach a problem uh, logically to solve. Okay, so the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta posed the following puzzle. When eggs in a basket are removed two, three, four, five, or six at a time, there remain respectively one, two, three, four, or five eggs. When they are taken out seven at a time, none are left over. Find the smallest number of eggs that could have been contained in the basket. Okay. So, how could we write this information as a set of linear congruences? Well, we are told that if we take in groups of two, in groups of three, in groups of four, in groups of five, or in groups of six, we're going to have some remaining. So, this should uh, set up in our minds, right, that I have one left over when grouping in twos. I have two left over when grouping in threes. I have three left over when grouping in fours. I have four left over when grouping in fives. I have five left over when grouping in sixes. However, I am able to group in sevens. Okay, now it, it is interesting to note and important to note that I am one short of completing the set essentially if I group in twos, threes, fours, fives, or sixes, right? That if I took things in groups of sixes, I would be one short of being divisible by six. Groups of fives, I would be one short of being divisible by five, and so on. Okay, so. This is my linear congruences. Now, explain why the Chinese remainder theorem cannot be directly applied and what must be done to be able to use the Chinese remainder theorem. Well, the Chinese remainder theorem requires relatively prime moduli. Right? So I need relatively prime m1, m2, dot, 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 all the way to m sub r. Okay, but we see that 2 divides 4 and 3 divides 6. And that's not going to do us very much good. Okay, so why can the Chinese remainder theorem not be directly applied? Because I don't have these relatively prime moduli. But what can I do? I could only consider those with prime moduli, right? So in other words, say, okay, x is going to be equivalent to 1 mod 2, x is going to be equivalent to 2, mod 3, I can't use 4, x is going to be equivalent to 4, mod 5, and x is going to be equivalent to 0, mod 7. Okay, so then what? Well, next I should be able to use the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, so let's see how that would work, All right? So for using the Chinese remainder theorem, I do need to know the product of each of my items, All right? So my big M, All right? And I'm using 2, 3, 5, and 7. My big M is going to be 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. And that is 210, if I'm not mistaken. 
All right, two times three is six, times five is 30, times seven, that's 210. All right, then M1, right, M2, M3, and M4, all right? So my cap M1 is going to be 3 times 5 times 7, so that's 210 divided by 2, that's 105. Then 210 divided by 3, that's 70. 210 divided by 5, that's going to be 6 times 7, that's 42. And 210 divided by 7, well that's going to be 30. Okay, so what's my next step? My next step now is to use those numbers and find the multiplicative inverses. So what do I have? I've got that 105 x1 needs to be equivalent to 1 mod 2. I also have that 70 x2 needs to be equivalent to 1 mod 3. And 42x3 needs to be equivalent to 1 mod 5. And finally, 30x4 needs to be equivalent to 1 mod 7. Okay? So, solving here. 105 is odd. So that means it's going to have a remainder of 1 on division by 2. So that means x1 can equal 1. 70 is 1 more than 69, so that's 1 mod 3. So x2 is equal to 1. 42 is has a remainder of 2 on division by 5. If I multiply this by 2, the units digit will be 4, and that won't give me a remainder of 1. But if I take this 42 and multiply it by 3, the unit's digit is 6, and on division by 5, I'll have a remainder of 1. So x sub 3 needs to be 3. Okay, and then x sub 4 here, 30 has a remainder of 2 on division by 7. That's not good. 60, therefore, would have a remainder of 4 on division by 7. That's not good. All right. 90 has a remainder of, let's see here, 3 on division by 7, 4, 6. 90 has a remainder of 6 on division by 7. That's not good. But 120 would work. So x of 4 needs to be equal to 4 because 120 is 1 more than 119, and 119 is divisible by 7. Okay. So now we have our next setup. So then we know that our x solution right, is going to be the sum of these products from the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay. And if I do this, we know that the... 4, 3, 1, 1 goes there. 30, 42, 70, 105 goes there. And then we've got to come back up and look at our 1, 2, 4, and 0. So we have 1, 2, 4, and 0 goes there. All right, so now what do we have? We're going to have 100, 105 plus 270 plus 4 times 42 times 3. All right, so if I put that into my calculator, all right, let's slide this up so we can see everything. So 1 times 105 times 1 plus 2 times 70. Whoops, got to be careful there. All right, plus... 4 times 42 times 3, and then 0 times something that's 0, so that gives me 749. Okay, now 749 should work, but we want the smallest number of eggs that could be contained in the basket. So 
I know that x, which is 749, is going to be congruent to something modulo 210. All right, 210, because that's my big M. Okay, so how do I work with that? Well, I'll just come over here and just start subtracting 210. So that minus 210, minus 210, minus 210, that gives me, right, 119. And that's less than 210. So it does seem like 119 should be my solution. Okay, now if we've done the work correctly, 119 should be divisible by 7, which it is. 119 should be 1 less than divisible by 5, which it is. Should be 1 less than divisibility by 3, which it is. And should be 1 less than divisibility by 2, which it is, right? Because 120 divides by 2, 120 divides by 3, and 120 divides by 5. Okay. Now, does this solution satisfy all the conditions posed by Brahmagupta? Justify, right? Well, let's see here. 119 is equivalent to 3 mod 4 because 4 times, let's see here. I know 120 is divisible by 4, right? 120 is divisible by 4, so that means that 4 times 29 plus 3 is equal to 119. So it does satisfy that, and 119 is equivalent to 5 mod 6 because... And we can uh, go through in this approach and say 6 times, right? So 6 times 20 would be that. So 6 times 19 plus 5 is equal to 119, right? And let's just double check that. 6 times 19 plus 5, 419. So, yes. All conditions satisfied based on remainders. Okay. So this is an interesting problem uh, posed by the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta. If you'd like to read more about or watch more about Brahmagupta, I've got some links that you can use. Uh, the history of mathematics is actually quite interesting, and as always, if you have questions, please do reach out. In our next video, we're going to solve this problem in a slightly different way that does not involve the Chinese remainder theorem. Please stick around for Maths with El Profe Lowe.